the Joe Rogan experience. When you're talking about China and the NBA and Hollywood movies, a lot of people think of those things, those the interactions that Hollywood has that and the NBA has with China as being insidious. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't think it's a good thing at all that China has that kind of an influence, and they also think it's embarrassing. Like a lot of people think that it's embarrassing for the NBA to when the negative tweets uh, when they're in support of Hong Kong. And then uh, all of a sudden there was some pushback and the NBA was removed from viewership in mm -hmm. China and there was uh, a lot of sponsorships being pulled and it became a giant issue. And then all of a sudden you saw the NBA kind of backtrack and kind of kowtow and a lot of people found that to be pretty disgusting. We don't want the United States to ever be a country that's doing that to China, right? If China has a bunch of, I don't know what they're really into over there, ping pong players? Like, what's their what's their primary sport? I don't know. They have a lot of basketball Basketball, over there. they like basketball. So imagine if Chinese basketball becomes super popular in the United States, and then uh, the Chinese basketball players in the United States start talking shit about how Apple uses slave labor. Mm -hmm. And uh, we go, hey, hey, watch your fucking mouth, bro. We won't. We won't pay for your Chinese basketball anymore. And then all of a sudden China backs off. Like we would think of that as being pretty gross by the United States of I ignoring some human rights violations or, or trying to whitewash them and trying to economically attack another country. So like the saying that it's a positive that China has all these people and using as an example, the fact that they strong arm Hollywood and they strong arm the NBA a lot of people think that's moving in the wrong direction, me included. Like, I don't want Well, that. no, I, I don't think it's positive. I'm saying right. we need to be in a position to level the playing field. But is right? that leveling the playing field, or will we just... Look, we're... Corporations have a, a giant problem with infinite growth, right? Yep. This is a thing that seems completely, totally preposterous, but it's the norm and the standard in the business world. You You want your growth to increase every year, no matter what, and God knows where that goes. I'm not a mathematician <laughs> or an economist, but if you, you f extrapolate and keep going with that, it leads to preposterous outcomes, right? Hmm. That's what people would be worried about tenfold if there's a billion people here. They'd be like, oh my God, we'd be even more ruthless and more cutthroat and and more like maybe more competitive with the rest of the world, but in what way? Well, so here, let, let's talk about the China okay. thing, right? So, the NBA is under China's thumb yeah. because they need access to that market. Do they, Hollywood, though? Well, do they, though? they think they do. Aren't they right? rich as fuck? <laughs> so we could say, right, maybe we need to have a rule that says, like, well, you know, you, you can't let the Chinese censor your shit, right? Yeah. But the, the relative size of the markets is going to matter. Right, so we're we're on Spotify here, right? So that's a Swedish Swedish company, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, they make they, great meatballs, I hear. Absolutely, it's a lovely country, right? <laughs> a but small so country. so Sweden's a little country, right? Yeah. All their companies, you know, you're talking Volvo, Scania, mm -hmm. Spotify. They're dependent on a global marketplace. They mm. need access. Right. If China is the biggest market in the world, ultimately they're going to find themselves playing by China's rules. If America stays the biggest market in the world, then we can play by our rules. And not that we should use the, the way China does, right? We shouldn't say, like, no, nobody can say bad stuff about America. America, we've got a great tradition of free speech here, uh, despite some tensions. Uh, it's a world of difference from China. And we carry so many other countries, smaller countries from Europe, Canada, Australia, on our backs in that regard as creating a sort of cornerstone of openness as a leading market in the world. That's how it's been for so long that people don't even think about it. But if we go into a world where China's the number one economy, where that's the number one market, where that's what every company cares most about China's rules, then we're going to be in trouble. We're going to be in trouble here. The Swedes are going to be in trouble. And I don't think that's a world we should look forward to. I mean, I started talking about, you know, China is trying to use their, their market power to sort of censor Americans. And nobody in America thinks that's good. Right. Like there's nobody is like, yeah, I think it's great that like Marvel had to take a Tibetan character out of uh, Dr. Strange. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Like that's, yeah. you know, it's not the biggest deal in the world. It is kind of but a big it's deal, though. BS. Like yeah. what? Like what? What is that? Right. And it puts in perspective, like what our disagreements actually amount to that, like when you compare us to China this is golf, 
right? And like, don't we want to stay number one? Don't we want to have the biggest market, the biggest economy? So you you think that it's ever possible though to if we got big enough, we mm-hmm. could ignore the influence of China? Do you think they would put that money aside? Because China's always going to be big. Well, I don't think you ignore it, but, but you are able to have the upper hand. Do you really think that we could ever get to a point where Marvel would say, you know what, fuck China, we're putting a Tibetan guy in there. It's supposed to be Tibetan. Well, you're in a place where you can say to them, you've got to. We don't have to make it a white woman Yeah. with a bald head. Let's make it a Tibetan guy like it is in the comic book. I think in the comic book it's a guy, right? I think so, yeah. Well, either way, it's the Tibetan. It's definitely Tibetan. Yeah. The ancient one. Yeah. I don't think it's a woman either. I think they went full diversity. They, 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 maybe it's a good move going with a bald lady and people will say less shit than if you go with a, a I mean, white I think man that that's, I think that that's right. You, you, you gender bend it. Yes. So then it, it's like, well... Maybe you shouldn't criticize that right. because it's good, but it's like no, we know what actually is motivating yeah. this. It's and, gross, and it's it sucks. But do you think it, we could ever get to a point where China wouldn't have an influence because China is still going to be a billion people in a huge market? They're big, but I think we can be number one. I mean, there's beyond growth. Like I think that we have to be more forceful, government wise, in how we treat our own company's willingness to cater into that. Like, I think that we need to put some social pressure, if nothing else, on Hollywood to not do that kind of thing. But see, they did hedge their bets by making it a woman. It was, like, very clever. (laughs) Sure. It's a clever little way of being a bitch. Um, Do you remember when the World Health Organization, there was a, a, a spokesperson for the World Health Organization being interviewed by this woman, and she kept asking them about Taiwan, mm-hmm. and he uh, he hung up the phone, mm-hmm. he hung up the show, the camera, and then when he came back on, she was like, uh, "So we were talking about Taiwan." He's like, "Well, China's done an amazing job, and I think we've kind of covered that." Yep. And she's like, "What?" And everybody's like, "Look at this." He won't even mention Taiwan, mm-hmm. like because Taiwan is not a recognized entity mm-hmm. by the People's Republic of China, or whatever the fuck they call themselves. That's the tough. I mean, you know, the WHO is like a unique. Uh, bind in that regard but it's you know it's troubling right like when you see the olympics right on nbc like the broadcast was referring to taiwan as chinese taipei which was like some kind of international yeah and you're watching like this is bs you know like it's fine if the ioc itself because like you want to have china in the olympics it's a big country and so you know they want to be a pain in the ass about it i don't know maybe you got to give in but like an American television broadcaster. It's like have some self respect. Yeah. Chinese it's it's Taipei. called Taiwan. I yeah. like I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what Taiwan means or I was just like that's what it's called. Yeah, you're not allowed to say I'm, it. I'm though. not gonna pretend. Isn't that amazing though that they're willing to capitulate? But that's what people do. You oh, know, it's so weird. The like the Doctor Strange thing is weird, but there's a lot of instances. The NBA thing's weird. There's so many of these things that are weird. You're like, what? Really? But you just realize how much money's coming from China. Yep. And that, you know, they've worked very hard to expand that influence and reinforce that influence. They're very deliberate about it. And yeah. I think it's something America needs to be more serious about, you know? And I think people, just like people in culture and society, need to be more outspoken. That like, you know, because each little compromise, I'm sure whoever in the script meeting was like, can we just make this a white lady? Yeah. It was like, well, what's the big deal? Right. Well, okay, but we're like completely erasing the Doctor Strange. Tibetan, yeah. Well, also Tibetan, Tibetan culture, culture, right? Yeah. You know, t- like oh, Tibetan culture is not that big a deal in the United States, of course, because we're the United States. But this is one of its footprints, mm-hmm. right? And to just... Yeah. snuff it out like that because of chinese money because you want the chinese market and like that's that sucks yeah there was a video about all the different things that they've done to films to cater to chinese markets and how different they make these movies it's and it was really bizarre yep um would that change at all if there was a billion americans i mean i think it would i think that the more america has clout the more we can say Look, you have to say no 
to Chinese censorship if you want to be in the American market. Mm. I don't think that's going to be a realistic approach if we slip and fall further and further behind. See, but they don't know that there's Chinese censorship until after the fact we find out, well, Dr. Strange's mentor was actually supposed to be a Tibetan man. They turned into a bald lady. Well, no, I mean, with like with the movies, there's a whole process. Uh, Pen America did a good report about this, but like where Hollywood films are submitted to the Chinese censors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we ought to say, I mean, a whole billion thing aside, like, I think we ought to say, like, no, like, you can't, you can't do that. Did, uh, you know, if the Chinese didn't don't want to let you send your say movie. no to that, didn't, did Tarantino say no to the editing of scenes? I think there was a, a thing they wanted edited out. It might have been about Bruce Lee. Because, hmm. you know, there's this, which I found uh, distasteful, even though I'm a giant Tarantino fan, his portrayal of Bruce Lee is just not accurate. He made him look like a buffoon. Oh, in uh, Once, Once Upon a Time, Time in Hollywood. Hollywood, yeah. I think they resisted the changing. Is that true? Here it is. Uh, Tarantino, uh, yeah, one of the rare geez. directors with the power to demand final cut on his relatively expensive films, reportedly has no intention of re-editing the picture. Not for Shannon Lee, not for Chinese censors squeamish about the film's graphic violence, not for any reason. Yeah, he refuses to recut for the Chinese market. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. you know, I don't know. I mean, that that Bruce Lee was not... It was scroll funny. Down, scroll down on but it's not really fair to him. Okay, look at that. The film will not be released in China. Mm-hmm. Wow. He refused to edit the Bruce Lee scene out in order to secure a theatrical re release in China. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.